Hi guys and welcome back. Today we're going to take you on eight adventures you won't want to miss if you're coming to Peru. Many times when people think of Peru, they automatically think of Machu Picchu because in 2007, it was named one of the seven wonders of the world. But in this video, I will share with you our top eight adventures that'll show you just how diverse Peru really is. From snow-capped mountains to sand dunes as far as the eye can see. I'll also be sharing with you some of the other tours we did that if you didn't have time for, you could definitely skip. And I think you'll be shocked to learn what adventure comes in at number one. So strap yourself in because your eight amazing adventures starts now. Starting in at number eight is Wakra Pukera. Wakra Pukera was a tour we did from Cusco and even though the landscapes were amazing, to say the least, it was a long journey to get there and that's why it lands itself at the bottom of the list. Be prepared to spend at least eight hours of this tour in a van that traverses over rocky terrain shakes you up and down hills and weaves you through countless switchbacks. If you get motion sick, or even if you don't, you'll definitely feel Peru's back roads beneath your seat. Once we arrived at the starting point, we didn't realize how short the hike would be at just two kilometers. Our first thought was, we just spent four hours in a van to find out the hike is only two kilometers. But honestly, the hike was amazing. As we were walking on the trail, the views were beautiful. And just when you think, oh, this is an easy hike, like I did, it felt like the last kilometer was all uphill. I totally jinxed us when I said, oh, it's not bad. It's nice and flat with a little bit of up and down. Now we have reached the climb. Once we finally got up to the ruins of the Horned Fortress, we were given plenty of time to explore. But I think I was more amazed of the landscapes that surrounded the ruins than the ruins themselves. We also passed some porters and horses along the path. I think there was only one other group when we were there, so it basically felt like you had the place to yourself. In total, it was a 14-hour day and it cost $48 Canadian, which included breakfast and lunch. So overall, this tour's only downfall was the long drive. Number seven, free hiking in Cusco. Let's be honest, who doesn't like free hiking when you can explore on your own and see some pretty cool sights along the way? There were a couple of hikes that we did while we were staying in Cusco. Oftentimes we would just look on the map, see what's around us, and then just venture off. I'd say my favorite was the Cuenco archaeological complex and the surrounding area. It's in the area near Saxe Woman Ruins, and we explored this area for hours. We also stumbled upon an area filled with eucalyptus trees and even more ruins. It was just a great area to have a picnic, just sit and relax. Just south of the Saxe Woman Ruins is another set of ruins called Ramiwasi. The hike to get there is good practice if you plan on doing any of the bigger tours offered in and around Cusco. Hiking to Ramiwasi plus Cusco's elevation will definitely test your endurance. You'll get great city views and it's nice and quiet away from the hustle and bustle of the main square. Jay and I like to go off the beaten path and explore on our own. Away from the crowds, it kind of gives you more of an authentic feel. I've ranked it number seven because it's a budget-friendly option. But most people only have a short period of time in Cusco and their focus might be on the bigger, more well-known areas. But I feel like if you have time, this is a must-do. Number six, hiking in Olente Tambo. If you've never heard of Olente Tambo, like me, and you're thinking whether or not a spending time in Olente Tambo is worth it, I'm here to tell you that you will not be disappointed. I'd recommend staying at least one or two nights to explore this cute little town. Not only can you hike for free, but we had some of the best Peruvian food we've ever had. More on that later. We were lucky enough to be visiting Olente Tambo when they had their big Mother's Day celebration and the main square was alive. We did two really great hikes for free while we were there, got lost in a farmer's field, and tried alpaca steak for the first time. It's so good, and I can't recommend this place enough. Cherry tomatoes and the avocado in the salad. So very good. Roasted potatoes, the beef. It was like I had my own little roast beef there. It was perfect. Olente Tambo is also a gateway to the Sacred Valley, and this is one of the lookouts on your way to Machu Picchu. Pinky Luna was a great hike. It was high up overlooking all of Olente Tambo, 
You could see the Olente Temple Sanctuary off in the distance where there are some more ruins to explore, but they are not for free. There's beautiful plants and flowers spread out all along the hike and the ruins had lots and lots of stairs. After we finished at Pinky Luna, we headed off to our next adventure. And what an adventure it was. Are we heading in the right direction? Yeah, I think we go, go down there and turn right. Okay, perfect. We followed Google Maps to what we thought was in the right direction and ended up seeing way more than we expected. We ended up in a farmer's field saying hello to the pigs and to the bulls and a farmer's friendly cow named Linda. We were obviously off course, but the farmer was extremely friendly and pointed us in the right direction. As they say, sometimes it's more about the journey than the actual destination. Kirikai was the second set of ruins we visited and it was set back close to the Yerbombe River, which was surrounded by beautiful mountains and more farmland. We had beautiful weather to explore around Olente Tambo and it should definitely be on your list if you have a few extra days to explore while you're visiting in Peru. Number five, Pacoyo Rainbow Mountain. Many people that plan a trip to Peru have the Vinicunca Rainbow Mountains on their must see list. But in 2018, a new set of Rainbow Mountains were opened to the public called Pacoyo Rainbow Mountain. While there are still land disputes between the Chilihueni community and the Cusco's regional management of foreign trade and tourism, the Kaleidoscope mountain ranges still remain private property and they are set within the beautiful Andes Mountains. Iron, magnesium, and many other mineral deposits make up the marbling of the colors you see while hiking up to the top. Our tour started at 5 a.m. where we drove two hours to breakfast and then after breakfast, drove another hour and a half to the base of the mountain. We found the hike up the mountain to be one of the easier hikes we did because it was a gradual climb with flat terrain along the way. This tour cost $58 Canadian per person, which again included breakfast and lunch and was about 14 hours in total. This was one of the first hikes we did and it was a great warm up to the other hikes that we had planned while visiting Peru. The only reason it comes in at number five is because of the long hours spent in a van over very bumpy, very windy roads and it costs a little extra, about 20 Canadian to fly the drone. So keep that in mind if that is something that you want to do. Number four, PSAC. If you enjoy hiking and are up for the challenge, the PSAC ruins will not disappoint. Not only is the hike a UNESCO World Heritage Site, but the town of PSAC is located in the Sacred Valley and is filled with traditional Peruvian goods and beautiful people. PSAC is also known to come alive on Sundays when people from surrounding communities come together to sell their fresh produce and handmade goods. The PSAC ruins were once an Inca neighborhood and fortress built in 1440. And what do all challenging hikes start with? Endless amounts of stairs. And that's only to the ticket booth. Here you'll buy your entrance ticket for about $25 Canadian called the Bolto Turistico, which is a multi-entrance ticket to various attractions in and around Cusco. You'll definitely want to bring water along with you because it's a 3.2 mile loop hike and you'll gain an elevation of 440 meters. On your journey to the top, you'll walk along open edge cliffs, small streams of water, tiered Inca landscapes and thorns, huge thorns. We didn't realize just how massive these ruins are. They cover 90 square kilometers. Of course, you can skip the hike and hire a taxi that will take you right to the top if your time is limited. We didn't have a tour guide, but we still managed to learn some important details about the surrounding mountains. Okay, so we were just walking around. I went one way, Jay went another way. And um, there was a tour guide that Jay was talking to um, just a few minutes ago. And he said that this mountain that is here, there's a whole bunch of holes and what my first thought was something's been eating into the side of the, the mountain but those holes all of the holes they're actual graves and bodies this is like a big cemetery isn't that crazy that's unbelievable you'll definitely test your fear of being in tight places and maybe meet a couple cute animals along the way one night is all you really need to explore this authentic little town of Pisa. so if you have an extra night i would definitely add it to the list Number three, Huacachina. Strap in for some sand duning fun as we explore this tiny desert oasis. When I think about Peru and its landscapes, Huacachina is the total opposite of what I expected. 
It has 360 degree views of sand dunes that resemble mountains. We stayed in Wakachina for two nights and I can tell you two nights are definitely not needed. I didn't realize just how small it was, but this gave us lots of time to explore restaurants, climb the dunes, and feel like a kid playing in the sand. <laughs> wow, this is fun. I think the main reason people come to Wakachina is to have fun riding around dune bugging and man, it was fun. The drivers know the dunes like the back of their hand, and they definitely took us on an exciting ride. We did the dune buggy tour at sunset, and it cost $12 Canadian per person, which included sandboarding as well. Which didn't look all that fun once I heard the other ones complaining about their aches and pains. So, we decided to skip it, and instead explore the dunes and fly the drone. Even though we didn't sandboard, I thought it was totally worth it. They took us to a few different areas to sandboard at different heights, and the last hill was huge. It was fun to watch the others go down the hill. The sunset was amazing and pretty peaceful just sitting high up watching the sun drop below the sand. What's great about Wakachina is that you can experience the whole desert oasis in a day and it can be as action-packed of a day as you want or just a chill day on a paddle boat. Whatever you are looking for, Wakachina is definitely a must-see. Coming in at number two, Machu Picchu. Sitting at 7,000 feet above sea level, tucked away in the Andes Mountains, Machu Picchu is the most visited tourist destination in all of Peru. Built around 1450 AD, this ancient Incan civilization is made up of 150 buildings, including temples and sanctuaries. You'll hike up and down many stairways and through compounds of mass slabs of stone. Many researchers have spent time here trying to uncover many myths surrounding how Machu Picchu was actually built, but some still remain a mystery. You're probably thinking, if it's the most visited destination in all of Peru, why is it only number two on your list and not number one? Well, I've seen and read so much about Machu Picchu, I already kind of knew what to expect, so it didn't give me that wow factor that I thought it would because of all the research that I did if that makes any sense. Was it beautiful? Absolutely. And I enjoyed the ruins and exploring it for four hours with our awesome tour guide, Carlos. What I really loved was the whole experience of getting to Machu Picchu, riding the train, stopping in Olente Tambo, staying overnight in Aguas Calientes. This is definitely an all-encompassing trip, but you can do Machu Picchu as a day trip from Cusco if you are short on time. But if you ask me, I think you'd be missing out on a greater experience if you did it that way. If I could break down the whole trip to Machu Picchu in just one minute, it would look something like this. We booked tickets with Inca Rail from Cusco. Once we were on the road, we made a quick stop at a viewpoint overlooking the Sacred Valley on the way to Olente Tambo, where you'll catch a train that takes you to Aguas Calientes. From Aguas Calientes, you'll get on a bus and it'll take you to the entrance of Machu Picchu. You'll tour around Machu Picchu, then head back to Cusco in the reverse order. Phew, that's a busy day. I would suggest staying one night in Aguas Calientes and one night in Olente Tambo, but only if you had the time. So overall, our Machu Picchu experience was definitely one of my favorite things I'll remember most about visiting Peru. And I think you will too. Finally, our number one pick, Austin Gate. Standing at 20,827 feet tall, Austin Gate Mountain is absolutely breathtaking. We didn't really know what to expect when booking this trip. We knew we wanted to go on a hike that would test our endurance in the elevation, and this 12 kilometer hike seemed to be the one that caught our interest. We did the seven lakes in one day hike, which took five hours to complete and it cost $36 Canadian per person. It was another long day, around 14 hours, and the tour included breakfast and lunch as well. Hiking through the private property, it didn't seem like you were on a tour at all. We were just exploring somebody's backyard. Can you imagine this as your backyard? The landscapes were amazing, and we passed many alpacas grazing in the grass, there were also horses for hire if you found the hike difficult. I'd say the hike definitely had its challenging parts, but it was a good mix of flat ground, small hills, and some short, steep climbs. 
Altitude is a real thing. Whew. My legs are on fire. Every step was more and more impressive and seeing the seven lakes was just icing on the cake. We were completely blown away by the sheer size of Awesome Gate, which will forever be known in our adventures as Awesome Gate. Its snow-capped mountains and gorgeous landscapes transported you to a whole nother world. For $36, it's hard to say no to an amazing adventure like this and should definitely be on your list. Now, just a quick mention of things you could skip. Keep in mind, this is only in our opinion, but once we did these tours, there were things that we would pick out from each tour that we would just go and visit independently, like the Cristo Blanco in Cusco. We ended up doing the city bus tour in Cusco, which drove you around to various sites within the city, and you ended up at the Cristo Blanco lookout. And because you can explore many of these things in the city on foot, I just thought the bus tour was a little bit redundant. We also participated in a small Quechuan ritual that I thought was really interesting. And I bet if you look hard enough, you could find one that you could book privately. But for $12 Canadian per person, the city bus tour will take you to see many things in and around Cusco. If your time is limited, this is a great opportunity to see lots of things in a short period of time. While we were in Arequipa, we found the two biggest tours that were being offered were either a bus tour or hiking Coca Canyon. And in hindsight, I think we should have picked Coca Canyon. We ended up doing both bus tours while we were in Arequipa, and this is what we learned. While they are both relevant to the history of Cusco, with both bus tours showcasing the same city highlights, we found ourselves learning about Arequipa's building materials deep in the dusty quarries. I did enjoy learning about the materials and seeing the stones in their raw form, but it's definitely not something you need to see to experience the beauty of Arequipa. The main square does an awesome job of that. One thing on the bus tour you might be interested in doing independently is going to the Arequipa lookout, and it's easy enough just to hire a taxi to take you there. Now, after watching this video, I hope you added a couple of days to your vacation to explore a few of the top eight adventures I listed in this video. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button, leave me your vote. Are you Team Machu Picchu or Team Awesomegate? Subscribe down below to follow our upcoming adventures to places we've never been and to some old places that we need to explore just a little bit more. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye guys.